Good morning and welcome, everyone. It's wonderful to be together on this Halloween day, this uh, 23rd Sunday in Pentecost. Such a beautiful, sunny October morning. Isn't it great? Don't you just praise God for where we live? I think it's just fantastic. Um, not a lot in the way of announcements. Anything there is today should be in the bulletin. And I just wanted to, uh, as I pray with us to begin, as we focus on God and what this day could bring us, uh, think about the COPS 26. And you know I don't like acronyms, and I learned that it's the United Nations Conference of the Parties, the parties concerned with climate change and uh, environmental impact upon the world. So let us pray. God, we pray for that gathering in Glasgow today. Uh, it seems as if we've come to a line in the sand regarding climate change and the recognition of it. And God, it's your world. We're called to be stewards. We ask you to guide us in that and guide us as we're stewards of all that you give us and of our relationships with each other and with you. So today, further us in that, point us closer to you, allow us to come near you and hold us tight, hold us lovingly as we worship. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. ancestral lands of the Wasonic and Coast Salish peoples. From many places and peoples, we come to this house in prayer. In this time and place, we are not alone, for we meet in the presence of the living God. For we meet in the presence of the living God. In this time and place, we are not alone, for the risen Jesus stands in our midst. The risen Jesus stands in our midst. In this time and in this space, we are not alone, for the wind of the Spirit moves in and through us. The wind of the Spirit moves in and through us. In this time and space, we are not alone, for we gather with the whole company of heaven. In this time and in this space, heaven and earth are one. In this time and in this space, heaven and earth are one. In this time and in this place together, one people in Jesus Christ. 
In the name, the name of, of God, God Creator, Creator, Savior, Savior and, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And peace, peace to, to his people, people on earth. earth. Lord, Lord God, God, Heavenly King, King Almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us hold this moment open to the Spirit of God. We thank God for stories. Stories that make us laugh and smile. Stories that Jesus told us. Stories that make us sad. Stories with scary creatures and good endings. God, on this night of Halloween, hear our prayer. We pray tonight for people who are scared or ill or in trouble or sad. We pray for those who listen to them and spend time with them. God, on this night of Halloween, hear our prayer. We pray tonight for those who are dying. And we pray for those who are remembering at this time friends and family who have died. God, on this night of Halloween, hear our prayer. Stay with us, God. Help us to share the light that you give us with those around us. We ask our prayers in the strong power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. with you. The good news of Jesus according to Mark. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that, he answered them well. He asked him, which commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there are no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength. And to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. 
the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As you remain standing, will you join me in prayer? God of the histories we tell, God of the histories we don't, on either side of a border, you are there. May we, in living out our faith, never pretend to there's a way to make ourselves purer or more righteous or holier by separating ourselves from those that you will never stop loving. Amen. Amen. Let me take you on a journey. Good morning. <laughs> really good morning. And we're going over to Europe and over to Northern Europe. Is the microphone okay? It's weird to me, but I just want to. Okay, let's try something else. How's that working for you? Is that much better? Yes. Okay, let's try that. Then I've got something to lean on. Getting older, you know. <laughs> so let me take you on a journey. We're going over to Europe. We're going over to the northern part of Europe. We're going over to a country called Scotland. Some of you might have heard about it. <laughs> and we're, we've arrived in Glasgow, and we're waving to the people at COP26. We're not going to spend time there, but we're waving to them. And we got on a train in Glasgow, and we're going to the coast up to a place called Oban. Travel by train up to Oban, and we get, some of you have done it, I see you nodding your head. And we get to Oban, and we get on a ferry. And the ferry is taking us across to Mull, the island of Mull. And as we get on the other side in Mull, we go on a bus. And that bus is taking us across Mull to the other side, to a place called Finneport. When we arrive there, we are walking, and we walk on another ferry. It's a long journey, right? We're on another ferry, and that ferry takes us over to an island called Iona. A holy isle, a thin place, uh, George MacLeod, the founder of the Iona community, called it. And we're on there, and one day we decide that we want to go on a pilgrimage on the island. And one of the most important pilgrimages on the island is a pilgrimage to St. Columbus Beach which is across the island. It takes a, a couple of hours to walk across there. So as we walk across, there's a number of stops that we'll make as we journey across Iona to get to St. Columbus Beach. The first stop is at a crossroads on the journey. And we would remind ourselves that in the Celtic tradition that God meets us at the crossroads of life. It's at those crossroads that God meets us and prepares our way as we are deciding a, a journey we're going to take. The next place that we would stop is a place called the Hill of Angels. And that is the story is told there that, eight, that Columba one evening sneaked out of the monastery and he was followed by another monk who to tells a story. And the monk saw Columba on this hill surrounded by angels and the angels were surrounding him. So we'd leave there and we'd go in a bit further and we'd get the machar. The machar is the grazing ground where the, the sheep or the cattle are grazed. Go up a hill and we'd get up to the top of the hill and we would stop at a reservoir. And we would remind ourselves of the importance of water in our culture and our society. And we talk about how we play with water where other countries don't have water to sustain themselves with. 
and we'll go across a flat piece and we begin to see the, the ocean on the other side and we'll go down a hill, put a steep hill, a steep hill and we're just going down sheep tracks down to a, a beach which is covered in rocks and we would be on St. Columbus Beach looking out into the ocean. It is said that as he left with his disciples from Ireland, that's the place he landed on uh, when he arrived there in Iona. And when you're on St. Columbus Beach, there's something that you do is that you pick up two rocks, and one of the rocks you leave behind on Iona, and one of the rocks you take with you. And the symbolic of what you're going to leave behind, is it something you're thankful for? Is it something that you're carrying that's heavy? Is it something that you want to remove from your life? And you leave that rock there. The other one you take with you, and that's tomorrow, that's a hope, how you're going to change, how you're going to grow as you continue on in your journey. Let me take you back to that hill. It's not a big hill, very small, uh, called the Hill of Angels. There's a more ancient name for that hill. And more ancient name is the Hill of Fire, which takes us to a pre-Christian time, a time when the celebration of Samhain happened. And this is, a, this is a time of Samhain now that we're going through. And the other side of Samhain is something called Bethane, a celebration, Celtic, ancient Celtic celebrations and beliefs. Samhain is a time when the seasons change, when summer ends and winter is upon us. It's a liminal space between this world and the other world. The Celt said, at this time of year, the veil is pulled back. The veil is pulled back. And the spirits of our ancestors come out and roam around and travel around the countryside. And the ancient Celts would dress up because not all of those spirits were friendly. Some of them were malevolent, and the spirits who came out at that time. And so they would dress up putting on animal skins or different outfits, so they would disguise themselves, they would guise themselves, and they would walk around at that time and realize that this was a very special time. All the animals were taken off the macha, taken off the fields, and brought, some of them brought into the houses, the ones that were able to, to house the animals during the long winter season. But some of them were slaughtered, and that, that meat was kept and fed the families during that season. On the other side is Berthain, which is the other side, the spring, the newness, the, the end of the winter season. And that hill of fire was where bonfires were set in the ancient times. And the cattle and the people were taken through those for a cleansing, a renewing uh, of the community and a renewing of everything that, that the Creator had placed upon them. Deep, deep beliefs that were there long before the Christians arrived. It's always interesting to me that those who went to evangelize in the Christian countries saw something in the angel teaching and practices of those who had lived there for thousands of years before they arrived. And those who lived there for thousands of years in those lands saw something, something in this gospel that they were proclaiming. And there was a wonderful melding together of those two in the Celtic lands. The church in its wisdom decided that this is a good thing, this uh, celebration, this time of the dead, this time of remembering our ancestors. Um, but they thought, we shouldn't really have it in October, we'll move it to May. And the church celebrated in May, and those people who celebrated so when continues to do what they've always done for thousands of years and celebrated it at this time of the year. So the church moved it back, moved the festival back. And so tonight for us as Christians begins a three days of me, me, uh, remo remembering, memorial of those of our fa family and friends, of those ancestors who have gone before us. This is a very, very unique time for us in the life of the church because we move tonight into All Hallows' Eve. And that's a, a Christian celebration, All Hallows' Eve. There's a service in the Book of Occasional Services for All Hallows' Eve. Tomorrow we move into All Saints. And then on Tuesday we move into All Souls' Day. And this is our season now. There was something there that those who discovered these Celtic lands said, these folk are not far from the kingdom of God. 
These folk are not far from the kingdom of God. We need to make space in our belief system for this to live and to act itself out. We cannot throw this out. When I grew up as a child in, in Scotland, as a uniqueness about Greenock, the, my hometown, everywhere else in Scotland, people don't go out and trick and treat, but they go out in guising. They go out in guising called disguise. They go out in costumes. And our culture and society have picked up on that. And we used to have uh, turnips, not pum uh, um, pumpkins. And if you want a chore, you go ahead and carve a turnip. <laughs> but it's a different, uh, but in Greenwich it's called galotions. For some reason, it's a French word that's gone into the culture, and we would go in galotions. We would not, tr we would not dress up in gory or monsters, because we never had that in those days. We never had the expense of masks. We'd get our father's clothes, and we'd dress up as tramps. We dress up as a father. Some really brave people dressed up as our mother. But, <laughs> but we go around from house to house. And what we had to do, uh, to around to house to house, was to give something and receive something. To leave something in the house. We blessed the house by saying a poem, by singing a song. And the house would give us a gift, usually nuts. For some reason in, in the west coast of Scotland, you end up with a whole lot of nuts at this time of the year. <laughs> you read into that whatever way you want. <laughs> but we would have Brazil nuts and walnuts and peanuts and all of that stuff. And that's what you collected. On some occasions, on some occasions, in the more wealthier houses, you would receive money. I'm saddened to see the shape and form of uh, those who trick and treat. I'm saddened because of the gore that is there. And the whole idea of tricking and treating is not a giving and receiving. You give me something or I will trick you. I will do something to you. But those folk who are, I believe, who are going out and celebrating as we do in this culture, the season of Halloween, really believe that there is something other than this world. I really believe that. That they believe that there's something other than this world. And so we should give them space. As those early Christians gave the Celt space for their beliefs to exist and coexist with us, we should give them space. Because I don't believe they're far from the kingdom of God. The scriptures today speak about space. The space that is given by one culture, one belief, to another culture, to another belief. In the story of, we heard from Ruth, familiar story, where Naomi and Ruth leave Moab and come back to live in Israel. There's a graciousness from Naomi as she accepts who her daughter-in-law is. They're in grief. Naomi's husband has died, her son-in-laws have died, her sons have died, and her daughter-in-laws are with her in grief. One decides to go back to Moab, one decides to stay with her. And there's that beautiful commitment of Ruth that wherever you go, I will go. Your people will be my people, your God will be my God. And Ruth is, uh, Naomi is willing to accept that and give space to this woman who comes from a different culture and a different belief to live with her in her culture and her belief. She gives space for her to encounter her own God and the God of Israel. You see, all the way through the book of Ruth, Ruth is named as Ruth, the Moabite from Moab. And that's not insignificant because Moab the, were the enemies of Israel. And there was lots of things that were said about Moabite women uh, in that culture. So it's, it's bad enough to be a, Moab, a Moabite man, but it's even worse to be a Moabite woman. So there was that kind of exclusion, that distancing uh, by, by Israel. But Naomi brings her in, gives her space, gives space for God to work and for the culture to work in her life. And, and so she has changed. And she marries Boaz and becomes one of the matriarchs of Israel. Space. Space when you're confronted with someone whose beliefs and whose culture are not the same as yours. 
Give space for, for them to learn from you and for you to learn from them. So in the gospel, we have a scribe who comes up and challenges Jesus and says to Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus throws it back at him and listens to him telling him what the greatest commandment is. He gives space to this person to share his beliefs and his faith. And so he comes into a relationship with them. And Jesus says to them, you're not far from the kingdom of God. You're not far from the kingdom of God. The, re the theme of the book of Ruth is loving kindness. Loving kindness. How are we living that in our life, in our day and age? How do we share loving kindness with others? How do we change and transform ourselves through that loving kindness? And how are they, they changed and transformed? Some say that the book of Ruth is written over and against the book of Nehemiah and Ezra. And you know the story of Nehemiah and Ezra. When they came in to build the wall again, it's, part, it's ethnic cleansing. Everybody who was born, everybody who was married to a foreign woman had to divorce that foreign woman and leave her by the side of the road. So you can see why the book of Ruth is a powerful statement over and against that. Here is a foreign woman, a, Moab from, a Moabite from Moab, who is a matriarch of our culture, our tradition, and is part of who we are. That opening up to other cultures, that opening up to other faith communities, that opening up to those people that we might have trouble with, but God loves. God loves. Not putting up borders, not excluding them, but learning from them and growing in relationship with them. Not far from the kingdom of God. So as we go through tonight, and there's knocks at the door, and those ghouls and ghosties and goblins and whatever else turns up in our doorstep comes up and says, trick or treat to us. Let us show to them loving kindness. Let us care for them and look after them and not exclude them. Because remember, fr friends, remember each and every day, we all wear guises. We all wear disguises. And people are careful and caring for us and support and looking after us each and every day. We give thanks for that. So as we gather, let us remember to leave something, to give something, and let us take something from those we encounter. Join me in prayer. God of the histories we tell, God of the histories we don't. On either side of a border, you are there. May we, in living out our faith, never pretend that there is a way to make ourselves purer or more righteous or holier by separating ourselves from those that you will never stop loving. Amen. Let us have a moment of quiet reflection. As we come from that quiet time, I invite you to stand as you wish. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And together, glory to God, whose love working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. The, uh, the, sorry, the blessing of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. this place seeking Christ in all people. We go to love and serve our neighbors as ourselves.